Hi guys, so today I just want to show you how you can extract your own stock market price data completely for free using Google Finance. So here I have created a Google Sheet and I've just put in the names and the tickers of all the companies in the Nasdaq 100 index, just as an example. And what you have to do sometimes, when if you're on the US Stock Exchange, it's often enough to just use the ticker here, but if you want to do this for another stock exchange, you might need to first put in some letters that tells Google which stock exchange to actually look for this. So what we could have done here was actually to write Nasdaq and colon, and then this is completely exactly the same for Google. But if you're in another stock exchange, you don't write Nasdaq, you can write something else so that you have to find out. All right, so the first thing I usually do is to look at what is the price today for the stock and then and I can do this by using a function called Google Finance. So to call a function we have to use equal sign and then write Google Finance and then yeah this comes up as a suggestion. So Google Finance and here you can see what it wants. It wants the ticker. So that's what we have here in the B column and then it wants some things here. An attribute, start date, end date, interval. You don't need to use them all, but for the simplest thing here to just pick the price today, the ticker is in B2, then we need a colon, and then the attribute is price. And now it's gonna be happy. So one thing I wanted to mention here is if you try this at home and it doesn't work, sometimes I've noticed that if you have a lang language set to English, you have to use a comma here. But sometimes if you're not using English as your language, you might need to use a have to use a semicolon. So if you try this and it doesn't work, try to change the commas to semicolons and see if it works instead. So I just press enter and here's the price today for Apple. And then of course we can just grab this and get the prices for all of the 100 or so companies. Yes. So, so what I am often interested in is to go fetch the three months, six months and 12 month returns because this is what I'm using to look at the momentum of specific stocks. And this is one of the indicators that I use to pick stocks with. And that has worked pretty good, I wanna say, lately. So if you're interested in learning more about this, you can go check out this video. But to fetch the three months returns, we first need to fetch the price of the stock three months ago. So we can do the same. We can call Google Finance. We still need a ticker in B2, right? We need a price. And then what we're interested in is also to have a date. So we can't put in the exact date because we want this to continuously update, right? So instead of putting a date, we can put in a day. So the day is gonna be today minus 92 days. So three months is roughly 92 days, right? And then we're done. No, we're not done. So what we get then is a matrix telling us the date. Now it's telling us the date in some weird numeric form here, but never mind because we're not so interested in the actual date. And then it's telling us the closing price on this day 92 days ago. But we're only interested in the closing price, right? We don't care about the text here and we don't care about the date. So to only get this number in the second column, second row, we can put an index around this. So we say index this and then we're gonna tell it to take the second, second. So second row, second column. And then what we get is only the closing price and the actual number. But that doesn't give us the returns. So to get the returns of something, we need to take the price today minus the price three months ago, if you're interested in the returns in the past three months, divided by the price three months ago. So here we just have the price three months ago. So we need to take the price today, it's in C2, minus this, and we also need to tell Google to calculate this first by putting it in a parenthesis. And then we divide by this, because this was the price three months ago. 
All right, so enter. Yes. So now we got it in decimal form. So what I usually do is also to take it times or multiply it with 100 to get it in percent. So in three months, Apple has gained 7.88%. So if you wanna look at the price instead six months ago, we can just copy this, paste it here, but now we're not gonna look at the price 92 days ago, we're look at, gonna look at the price 182 days ago, because this is roughly six months. And the same goes here, and then enter. Okay, and Google tells us, do you want to autofill this? Yes, we can do that. So now we get the returns of all these stocks six months ago. And the same goes, of course, for 12 months. We can now exchange 92 here for 365, which I'm pretty sure you know is the number of days in a year. And then press enter and autofill. Yes. So now we have got all this price data, but we haven't got this filled out. So we can just drag this down and get all of the numbers for all of the stocks here. So here you have the returns for three, six and 12 months in percentage. And what you can do then, if you want to look at the six months momentum, you can just sort this column and look at which stocks had the highest returns. Or as I do, I take the average of three, six and 12 months first. So you can just make another column here and calculate that and then sort that. All right, I wanna show you another thing that you can use this for as well. And that would be to follow the stocks that you have purchased. So here I've just taken the five first stocks of the Nasdaq 100. Again, I put the ticker here. Then I put in a purchase date. And this you can of course choose if you want to do, but it makes some sense to follow when you, when you also bought these stocks. And then here I made up a purchase price because I don't actually own all of these stocks. And again, here I've just fetched the price today by using Google Finance telling it to use the ticker in cell B2 and then the price. And then to get the returns, we needed to take the price today, E2, minus purchase price, D2, in parentheses to tell Google to calculate this first, and then divide by the purchase price, and then multiply by 100 if you want to have it in percent. So this is how much my fictive portfolio or my fictive stock purchases have returned since I bought them in 2026. So I hope you found this little tutorial useful and that you now can go and create your own Google Sheet if you want to follow the price data of some stocks. And if you thought this was a bit complicated, you can go down into the description and fetch this specific sheet from my link. And I'm not gonna ask you for anything. It's completely free, no emails, no nothing attached. So just go fetch it if you want to. And I hope you find it useful and I'll see you all next time.